Hello, Drover Nation. Welcome back to the Green Room Podcast. With you, as always, I'm Tanner Shoemaker. And I'm Taylor Finney. We are the Sports Information Directors at USAO, and we are excited to keep taking you deeper into Drover Athletics. During the summer of 2019, the USAO Athletic Department announced that women's and men's golf would be making a comeback to the campus. The Drovers will field a full men's team and two individual players on the women's side. Head coach Steve Holden has done an impressive job recruiting, bringing over five student athletes that competed for MACU a year ago. We are very excited to be joined by two USAO golf stars, Hannah Price and Isaac Mastin. All right, well, welcome to the show, guys. We, we're excited to have you here, and we're excited to have golf back on the USAO campus. You guys are both transfers from MACU. Um, just tell us a little bit about what it's like coming over from a successful program and bring in, being able to play with so many people that you've already been playing with. I mean, uh, Isaac, you were on the team men's team last year that finished fourth in the conference. Um, Hannah, you competed for the Evangelist women's squad. Uh, same kind of situation that we'll have this year at USAO where we'll have where you guys had two female players. This year we'll have the same here. Um, so Isaac, just tell us a little bit what it's like being able to play with people that you're familiar with at a new university. Uh, yeah, it makes it a lot easier to come to a new university and start like the program, as you could say. Uh, it, I mean, it really means a lot because we had a lot of different offers and a lot of different routes and, you know, places we could have went, but uh, we all decided to stay together, and that was a big decision for all of us. So, uh, I mean, the main focus of the team is the same as it has been. We're at a little different level. We picked up some new kids. Some uh, We picked up a freshman and then a kid that went to high school here, Caleb Nichols. And, mm-hmm. Uh, really solid players, and it's really uh, starting to come together. Uh, you guys will probably see a lot of different results than what we had. and uh, It was a good first tournament. It was kind of slow, but um, we're definitely excited to have everybody that came from MACU plus uh, a couple new faces. Absolutely. I mean, you're speaking on that first tournament. Eighth place, not necessarily the placing that you want, but I think that's a pretty positive eighth place. You guys were four strokes behind sixth place um, out of 12 teams, and it's the first tournament of the year. I think you guys shot had one score of 80 that entire weekend. So out of 18 rounds of golf, only one score of 80 and all the other scores in the 70s, I think that's something that is definitely positive. I mean, you shot 74, 73, 74 for a 221 total over the week or over the first two days of the tournament. Um, not a bad start for you guys. Definitely a lot to build off of. And I know you guys are confident that it'll only get better from yeah. there. Um, Hannah, what is it like for you being able to come over from MACU with – maybe not the female pairing that you were with there, but coming over with guys that you're familiar with, being able to kind of practice the same way I guess you did last year, I'm assuming. Right. I think the best part um, was probably having my teammates come over with me just because we're already comfortable with each other. There's no need to like restart on the relationships there. We can just get out there and start practicing the way we've been practicing. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's something that'll help out both squads as you guys already have a whole lot of chemistry. I mean, you guys have spent at least one season playing together already, even if it was at a different university. Even there at MACU, you guys had Coach Holden there. Um, what is it like being able to – Was it what was it about Coach Holden that made you guys want to come over to USAO with him? Coach Holden, he just – he made everything really easy for us. He, he obviously wants the best for us, and he cares for us a lot. And so I think that was the, the factor that we were all – um, kind of looking at is he wanted us to be able to stay together. He wanted that um, team. And so when he offered us this, we were all just, like Isaac said, we all had different offers, wanted to go different routes. But when he said that we were going to be able to stay together and have him as a coach, we all love him so much. And so I think that was that was definitely um, the deciding factor for all of us is that we get to have our teammates and our coach with us. Right. And Isaac, how did that affect you having Coach Holden come here? Uh, the process when the – program dropped at our old school uh, was very difficult. We had a lot of people, like I said, calling a lot of people kind of, you know, overstepping the boundary of the time and space. And uh, when he first came up with this this idea, Coach Holden, about going to USO, you know, we never really, you know, kind of thought about it until we had a meeting with everybody and it kind of came surreal and like, like Hannah said, he does literally everything in his power to get us the best stuff we can have, uh, the best quality of practice we can have, and the uh, best players we can have. And he's done extremely well, and he continues to do uh, all those things. And yeah, like going along with Hannah, he just makes everything super easy. You know, he lays everything out for you, and 
you make sure uh, you know you you you're not going to go without in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. I mean, just from what I've seen so far, you guys look like Coach Holden is taking good care of you guys. I mean, your uniforms are looking sharp. You're practicing out at uh, what what Winter Creek Golf Golf Course over in. Oh, yeah, that's always a good. Uh, uh, incentive, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, nice, that's a nice gear, cool gear. That's what the guys like. So. <laughs> and we were talking to Hannah. I mean, you guys are getting to practice out at Winter Creek three times a week. Yeah. That's that's not bad. That, that's some. Yeah, Winter Creek is my uh, home golf course, and uh, my buddies have played with me out there before when we were over in the city. So uh, it's re- it feels, you know, that's another big thing for me. It feels so cool because I feel like I'm back home, and I feel like I'm more at home at this place when my home golf course is here, all the people I used to play with growing up as a junior golfer. And, uh, that was a huge thing for me when he announced that we were going to be practicing out there. That's what we love to hear. We love to hear that USA was home, and we hope to stay your guys home, and we hope to, that this program can continuously grow. Um, you guys are both talented golfers. You both have won awards. Uh, Hannah, you were a state qualifier in high school. Isaac, you've had some success in college so far with uh, two all-conference selections, two top five NCCAA uh, finishes, two-time runner-up in NAI competitions, and 13 top five finishes. What is it about the experience that you guys bring in that's going to help you guys so much this year? What, what is it that you've learned from your past that's going to help you this year? Uh, me personally is just – I mean, it's with any other sport is getting, you know, real time reps, you know, getting in there and uh, getting in different tournaments. And, you know, personally, I've seen uh, about everything you can see in a golf tournament, you know, playing with uh, other people that are kind of slowing you down, playing bad, you know, Mm -hmm. and golf is that type of sport. You know, you kind of play up. It's just basically like any other sport. You play up to your competitors Mm -hmm. most of the time, but you can also play down to your competitors. So. I, I try to tell the new guys, like, the biggest thing is set your goal and don't deviate from that goal because when you start, you know, aim small, miss small is a big saying we have mm-hmm. in golf. So I try to tell the guys, you know, you know, keep, you know, razor focused and just stay attached to your goal and uh, don't kind of go off of that and don't set your standards too low because if you set your standards, you know, really low, you know, your miss may be really low instead of if you set them really high, then your miss may not seem as bad. So. I'm sure that some other some of our other individual golf play, and our athletes that play individual sports they can relate to that where you're having to play against yourself. I mean, it, like you said, you can play up or play down to their, your competition, but I mean, really, if if you're just going after your goal, you're probably going to be more successful than you would either other way. Yeah. So I, I think that's definitely something that our individual athletes can relate to. Um, Hannah, how about for you? What what are you looking towards this year that you can bring from your past? I think since after playing a full season of college golf, you find ways to practice. You find different things to do, um, especially with having a different coach. He gives different drills. He knows he can see like the weaknesses, and he can see different things that um, past coaches may have seen. And so that's really helped me out so far. Is just um, finding the finding the small things. Like Isaac said, you have to set a goal, and so to get to that goal, you just have to do all the little things, and then it eventually leads up to that. So I think. Um, this season just focusing on the smaller things and um, trying to work up to that end goal Mm -hmm. that's probably so golf is a sport that is so focused on consistency I mean in your swing and your scores everything you do it seems like it has to do with consistency and with it being such a technical sport what are some of the things you guys do to keep technically sound during your downtime I mean what is your season like even what's your off season like how and just how do you maintain that consistency uh speaking for myself um you know i don't know exactly what hannah's schedule is but the summer the off season i guess talking Mm -hmm. about that is a lot of uh getting in tournaments getting in like amateur tournaments and kind of getting your name out there but you know team wise and you know college events it uh a lot of people don't realize a lot of people laugh at me or you know kind of smirk when you tell them how much you actually practice you know well you did, they say, well, how long do you practice? What time do you have practice? So that's usually, you know, one thirty, two thirty till dark. You mm-hmm. know, it's you practice, you know, range balls and putting, and depending on, you can be specific with what you want to do. But I've always found that I practice before, play a little bit, practice, and then that gives me a chance to warm up and then play. Because uh, with any sport, when it comes game time, you know your flaws really show right at the top. So when you 
play that nine holes or play 18 holes, you can kind of see what you actually need to work on instead of, you know, hitting mm -hmm. range balls all the time. So that's why I go back after and do all that stuff. I mean, one, one of the biggest things I could tell somebody trying to, you know, get to a different level of golf and what I've had to learn the hard way is that you, I mean, you have to stick to what you're doing and you have to give 100% no matter what you're doing in the game, whether it's practice, you have to practice like you're in a real situation or you'll be uh, complacent. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's something that any of our athletes and any, any of the sports could agree with. I mean, practice way play. We've all heard it from the time we were in peewees or little league or whatever it may be. We've all heard that term. And I mean, it applies to you guys. And that's something that Taylor and I have realized from doing this podcast and interviewing our athletes in various sports is that there are a lot of commonalities th right that's exactly the word i was thinking of that you guys that your sports are misunderstood but there's a whole lot more to them than people realize see that's that's one of the i mean biggest things is you know when you come down to usl you can feel like it's just a winning place to be like when the preseason rankings come out this year and we've got like what <laughs> every sport is number one in the sac <laughs> conference like i mean I mean, it just feels like, you know, there's those expectations there, but me personally and probably Hannah would agree, you know, we like that pressure. You know, oh, yeah. coming in as a new sport and you're like, oh, yeah, soccer, men's soccer, basketball, everybody's, you know, ranked super high. And, <laughs> you know, you want to be a part of that. And it, it really gives you something, you know, kind of a hope to be practicing for and to be good at, you know, to be recognized by your peers and, you know, what they're excelling and what they do very well. So Absolutely. And so, Hannah, for you, how, how is it? How does your off season go? What is what is your training like? How do you maintain your consistency, and uh, how are you going to apply that to your season this year and help the team continue to grow? Like Isaac said, just going out to the course every day it's so important because you can lose it so quickly. So I think just being out there and practicing and not just focusing on one thing but focusing on all of it um, that really gets you there. It really um, helps with that muscle memory. It helps you just keep keep what you've had in the past seasons and not lose it so I think that's really important Rex I mean I imagine just taking a month off can be tough on your guys swing I mean it, it might not be the most physical sport in the world but I mean just the technical aspect of golf is ridiculous I'm terrible at golf I swing with a baseball swing still so I'm not going to be putting up any kind of good scores anytime soon so I mean I I can totally understand how you guys have to stay in season and locked in all the time because if you don't then I mean, you're probably going to go downhill if you lose yeah. that consistency. So I, I definitely have a big respect for the work you guys have to put in to stay sound. I mean, I've never played a round of golf without getting extremely mad afterwards because I'm not good at it either. So how do you guys deal with the mental aspect of it? If you pulled, you know, 300 golfers, you know, that's, that's something that will make or break your game. That's where a lot of people fail, and uh, that's personally what my first couple of years, because I started off kind of really hot, because I started golf my sophomore, junior year of high school, so I was the first time I picked mm -hmm. the club. Well, you know, you get kind of like really hot, and it's just, it's, it's the most, I don't know how to explain it, backwards game you can play. <laughs> I mean, you can be on cloud nine, and it's not even two minutes later, you down. And, in my opinion, I think handling the mental game and how you handle it is 50 times more important than how you're hitting the ball that day. You know, you can uh, take, you know, a bad shot with a grain of salt or you can uh, let it you know, destroy your whole round. And that's really what uh, me and uh, Austin Davis might engage. We kind of tell the younger guys and the new guys, like, that's one of the biggest, most important part of your game. Like, you can practice. You can hit a million balls all you want. But, you know, if you don't have the right mindset when you step out there, mm. you know, it can be really detrimental to your game. I guess that's one of the things I was impressed by in your guys' first tournament it is how everybody was so consistent because, I mean, you guys didn't really have any bad rounds of golf. I really would like to, you know, give credit to um, Caleb Smith. He's a freshman from uh, UConn. That kid, I mean, hits the ball so well, and he's going to be an amazing athlete, like really good. Uh, Caleb Nichols, you know, he's he stepped up. He played in high school, and he was wanting to play, and it wasn't like he's just – you know, want to get on the team and stuff. I mean, that kid was out at Winter Creek every single day. And I mean, you know, kind of an eye opener to me when I saw those kids really do what, you know, they said they were going to do and mm -hmm. promise when they wanted to get on the team, you know, uh, 
the way they handled it, uh, especially Caleb Nichols, he really, really impressed me. That's, I mean, that's that's not an easy score to shoot, you know. Um, that's that's super tough, and that's his first competitive tournament in t two, three years. So, I mean, it, it was definitely impressive. I mean, I, I think just the fact that you guys were able to stay focused for, I mean, for the whole 18 rounds, if you count, or sorry, 15 rounds, if you count all three rounds for all five players. I mean, that's a tough thing to do. Uh, Hannah, what is it that you're looking for this fall and this spring from uh, from the women's side of things? We've seen the men's side play so far, but what can we expect from the women's side next week when you guys are in Springfield, Missouri? Well, there's only two of us, so we'll be playing as individuals. Um, we've set our goals, and our goals are to just keep keep our scores under 90. That's what our goal is this um, for this season. Um, I think we can do it. We've been putting in the work. We've been putting in the practice. Um, coach has been helping us out, and so I think um, I think that's a pretty reasonable goal for us. And I think I think we'll be able to do it. Uh, I'm just kind of curious here. How is it being on a team where th there are only two individual females on the USAO golf squad, but you guys are majority practicing with men? I mean, so you guys have six guys on the team, I believe, two females. How is that practicing with the guys? Is that helpful? Do you guys? do a whole lot with them or are they kind of separate practices just give me a little bit of a insight on how you see that so in the past in high school I always had a team and so there was always that um, competition you got to play with your teammates you got to um, fight for first bag so I miss that I miss being able to have um, the team competition but there's still that competition there I still get to play with them they still push me to do better every day and so and so does um, Aubin my mm -hmm. the other teammate we we play with each other and we get to push each other and so um, it's different but we've I think we've both gotten used to it but I think we'll both appreciate having a team in the next semesters. I know that's the plan I know Coach Holden that he's uh wanted to bring in some more female athletes in here so we can have two full squads um but yeah I was just curious on what it's like and you know, I'm, I'm assuming you guys shoot around with the guys quite a bit and I'm sure there are little tidbits that you guys can take away from each other so I was just curious and how you guys interact and how you guys practice. Yeah, for sure. I think we learn a lot from each other, like just um, getting to watch them. They do different things than I do, and so getting to see their swings and getting to see their techniques, it's you can just take away whatever you want and see what works for yourself. And with such a small squad where you only have eight players between the two teams, I assume that it's pretty easy to get close and really become familiar and comfortable with each other, and I'm sure that's a big boost for your guys' team because, man, you guys came from MACU together. You guys have a lot of substance to your guys' relationship as a team, I would say. For sure. I think that helps out a lot, just the bonding of it all. Like we all, um, the trips, they're so much fun and just that always gets us excited. It's its so much better having people you know and are comfortable with and get to talk to them and hype, hype each other up before our tournaments and stuff and then getting to see the scores and just encouraging. It's, it's really cool. Absolutely. So we talked about the kind of physical demands and the, the mental demands of this game. So why did you guys get into golf, like, initially? Well, I was, I believe I was a sophomore in high school. I could be wrong. A sophomore or junior. And I played baseball since I could walk. So I kind of got burned out from baseball, I guess you could say. It happens, you know. It definitely happens. I loved baseball. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was my time to be, you know, hang up the cleats, as they say. <laughs> but, uh, no, my... Uh, older cousin Wyatt he uh he played at Mackey with us so before uh, he was two years older so he finished his first two years of college he wasn't playing college golf well when I was in high school uh he kind of taught me basically everything I know and I was just going out and playing with him well like I told you I kind of got you know really good at it really fast faster than anybody thought and so when it was time for me to uh graduate there was you know a couple little offers and uh the most outstanding one was Mac U. Mm -hmm. It was right for me, you know. And we had a, a deal where he could come play for us, so we got to play two years. And I, that's, I mean, to get to play with him basically since I've started playing golf has really meant a lot, and uh, it makes it fly by. I can't believe, you know, it's, I'm already a junior in college. Everybody says <laughs> it. But yeah, I would, I loved it uh, from the first time I picked up the club. You know, even when you're mad and you're hitting bad shots, I mean, my mindset is like, man, you're out here playing golf. You know? <laughs> no like, kidding. I mean, 
Like playing well, playing I'm, golf three times a week, four yeah. times a week, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a good deal. And, I mean, a lot of people, if you ask, you know, that play golf just out the country club or something, you know, they'll they'll tell you all the time you'll you'll uh, regret the day you're done, you know. You'll, you'll be uh, super sad that you even got the chance, you know, to play competitively with other people. And it's a... It's a big treat, and then, you know, sometimes you get down about it, and it's hard, but, you know, I think it's helpful to remind yourself, like, hey, look where you're at, man. You know, you're, you're, you're doing this stuff with your friends, and you get to play, you know, basically as much as you want. And, and at a high level. Better. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. It's, I mean, it's, it's a different uh, feeling when you kind of get to step out of the van in the morning and stretch out, and, you know, all your friends are there, and we're just, you know, friends and family come and support, and, it's uh, it's really cool. It kind of makes the, the pressure go up, but like I said, we all like that. I think I speak for everybody. I think we all kind of enjoy the pressure. It makes it fun. Feed know? off of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so, Hannah, how about for you? What was it that got you into golf? My family has always played, so I would go to the course with them when I was smaller. Um, I started competitively when I was in eighth grade, and so ever since then, I've just loved it so much. Um, it's always just, it's always been there. It's always just been easy to go out and play. Um, and then I can play for the rest of my life. You don't have to be on a competitive team to um, be able to go out and do that. And so that's what I love about it. Right. And you guys are kind of part of something bigger now that you're here at USAO because you're revitalizing the golf team here. We haven't had a golf team since the 1980s. And if I remember correctly, it was one of the very first sports that OCLA started. It was here. either golf or tennis mm -hmm. for sure. So that's that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. That's cool that you guys are here starting that. And uh, you said that Matthew's program ended. So you're yeah. the end of that and the start of this <laughs> yeah, one it was, here. Uh, that was also, I mean, like I said, there was a cumulative effort with uh, Sid, the vice president, mm -hmm. and Steve. You know, get, I mean, they really worked hard to get us here. But, yeah, I didn't know. They they said i thought it was like we were the first program but then they were like kind of like it was you know it's been a long time yeah U way, so. usa has definitely had an interesting history of teams <laughs> yeah. going away and then finding their way back but we're definitely uh we wear the usa with a lot of pride you know we're very proud to be from this school and we can't thank especially you guys enough for you know doing all the stuff you guys do it's so cool to come in here and you know see all the stuff, all the effort you guys put into what we're trying to buy into. And, you know, that's that goes for all USAO, you know, alumni, uh, students, all, all of them. They're just, they really buy into what you're trying to buy in. And uh, it really makes an effort. And you can see it with uh, performance from all, this, all the teams and stuff like that. We greatly appreciate yes. that. I mean, yeah. we, uh, we, we love helping out our athletes because both Taylor and I ourselves were former athletes. Taylor even was a former evangel, just like yourselves. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we, we understand what it's like to be an athlete and we wanna give our athletes a platform, give you guys the shine, because especially with how great our teams are oh, here. Yes. I mean, we, we're already, we already know that golf is gonna be there pretty quick. I mean, mm -hmm. you guys were successful while you were at MACU. We, we expect it's only gonna get better here. Um, and I think just like you were saying, how you guys kind of feed off of our other teams where you may see women's and men's soccer, men's and women's basketball and baseball and softball, all those teams ranked. Uh, I'm glad that pushes you guys. I mean, mm -hmm. I definitely think that the culture at USAO has kind of become a blue collar culture, a bulldog culture where you're going to put in the work to win. And I, I think from what we've been talking about so far, that's definitely becoming evident that you guys are in the same boat. You're wanting to put in that effort. You're going to want to compete just like all the rest of our teams are. And I, I think that's awesome. That definitely excites me. I've been excited about the announcement of golf since Sid told me probably. Yes, yeah, has. a lot of people have. I mean, a lot of people were talking about it, and there was a big buzz when we came to, you know, got but, on campus. And, and it was like tough that. for me to keep it a secret because Sid told me probably in April or March, hey, we're probably going to be bringing golf back. I was like, oh, right on. And when yeah. can I tell? Uh, probably not till July. Yeah. Oh, come on, Sid. Yeah. It was it – was, uh, Everybody was, it seemed like everybody we talked to was like, oh my gosh, you know, you're the golf guys. And yeah, it's, it, that's another thing that contributed just feeling like you're home. You know, we were all nervous, you know, uh, some of our guys live in more Norman, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's just, it feels really good to be able to have that easy, easy transition to go into mm -hmm. a different school. Cause I've never transferred, they've never transferred, you know, and right. we didn't know what was going to happen. We basically got, you know, I don't want to speak bad about Mackie. They have great people, you know, but mm -hmm. 
you know, we kind of got left out to fend for ourselves, really, you know, with not a lot of time, you know. And Absolutely. So, so it was it was a definitely saving grace. And when we got here, you can just tell everybody's excited for you to be here. You know, everybody's kind of bought into what you're doing. So it's it's a for very sure. big blessing. So we're, we're going to go ahead and preview now your guys' next tournament. You guys are going to be heading to uh, Springfield, Missouri on September 16th and 17th. So this will actually air after you guys have actually played. Um, but you guys will be playing at the River Cut Golf Club in Springfield, Missouri, the Evangel Fall Classic. What are the expectations that you have, Isaac, for the men's squad in that tournament? What are some of the things that you're wanting the squad to improve on from this past tournament? We've kind of we kind of do our research, especially when we're traveling, to kind of see you know what's going on. And I mean, it's definitely a big treat for us to be playing out there. It's mm -hmm. a super nice course. I think the slope rating is like it's right around even par seventy two. So we're uh, we're very um, set in stone on what we want to do. We have uh, three guys. You know, we'll kind of keep a secret with what we're trying to do. You know, <laughs> keep it a surprise. But uh, trying to go low. Uh, our top three guys we're really we're really trying to go low we've been doing this for three years together now so we're, uh, we're kind of got to the point we had a long talk the other night actually is uh you know we want to be a part of what's going on around here and uh, our expectations are uh, very high right now and uh, we're aiming for the stars and we're just kind of tired of uh you know looking back on tournaments and being like man what if we did that you know we want to start uh being the people that uh or be the guys that people are talking about after the tournament's over. So Definitely understandable. And how about for you, Hannah? What are you looking forward to in your guys' tournament opener? Yeah, I think um, the first tournament is always so exciting. We have, we have our goal set, and so I think just focusing on them and just getting back out there. It's been, it's been a long <laughs> summer, and so we're just ready to get back, and, um, back into the competitive season. Well, I'm sure it was hard watching the guys compete last week while you guys were – Still practicing oh, yeah, on the course. Sure. <laughs> Isaac, can we expect any hole in ones this court on this course? Oh, I was actually gonna bring that up. I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, well, I first of all, give us a little bit of a background story yeah. on, on what happened. Because well, when I was reading your guys' bios last week and putting them on the website, I think about four of them mentioned that their favorite sports memory was your hole in one. Oh yeah, they. Uh, it was it was wild. We were playing. Uh, we we're uh, at Matthew. Is my was it my freshman year? Was it when it you was, were? You know, it was your freshman year? Yeah, it was my freshman year, and uh, Gage and AD, the two dudes that are here, they're probably just messing with me. But they, uh, we were on hole 14 at uh, Hidden Trails Golf Course, and uh, when it was behind our back, and I kind of, it was like 160, I think. I hit like a little pitch and wedge, and the pin was just right over the uh, bunker, and it kind of took one hop, and we couldn't see the pin. Well, I told my buddies, I told Wyatt and Gage and AD, I was like, that's in the hole. You know, like, <laughs> messing with them. Oh, we walked up, you know, you couldn't see the ball on the green, and it was like, maybe it went over the back, and it was just <laughs> right down in there. But uh, yesterday, or excuse me, Friday, maybe it was Friday, uh, I went out and played Winter Creek. I was all by myself, of course. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah, no, sure. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't actually make one, but it was the closest I've been in a while. It was a... It was a long shot. It was like a 220 yard. I hit like three iron, and it just kind of was one of those shots. You know, you kind of watch till the very last ball, of, <laughs> till the very last rotation of that ball, and it kind of stopped right on the back edge of the lip, and it was a tap in. So, well, at least you had witness on the first one. <laughs> yeah, there, there was people there. They, they can attest for you, even though they probably won't. But uh, no, this is a easy. I mean, is I wouldn't say easy course, but it's in very good shape, which to me that translates as you know. You can hit good shots. You cannot worry about being, you know, bad lies and all that good business. So, I mean, yeah, you might see some aces. Uh, Austin had one last year at uh, Cooper's Hawk. It was a practice round, and uh, I will put this on anything you want. He, I promise that he called it right <laughs> before he walked up. He actually said this is a central, and he hit a little wedge, and it took one hot one straight in the hole. <laughs> practice round. So. You can hear them all throughout the course, them yelling. They were so excited. Yeah, we, uh, we were definitely the talk of the tournament, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Well, hopefully we'll see that this week. Yeah. If not, then next one. <laughs> <laughs> any other advice or any, any other things you want to say before we wrap it up? Definitely be watching for our scores to be posted. Um, some of the tournaments, I don't think there will be uh, – I mean, there might be some – 
I don't think there'll be any like live streaming or nothing like that. Some of the bigger terms we have will, but definitely I know you guys will keep everybody posted. Oh, yeah. and Y'all do a very good job with that. So I think, uh, yeah, just be watching for us and uh, ready to finally be a part of what USA is all about. And hopefully we can start, you know, putting in what or getting out what we've been putting in. So very exciting. And Hannah, you kind of kind of hinted that your team is still growing within the next semester or two. Do you have any advice for any future teammates? I would say just any experience is welcome. Like it's it's so easy to get better in golf if you just put the time and the effort in. That's all we need. We just need someone who's going to put the time and the effort in, and um, it's it's appreciated. Absolutely. I mean, and to stay up to date with the men's and women's golf teams is there at the Evangel Classic. Go and follow USAO Golf on Instagram as well as USAO Live on Twitter and USAO Drovers Athletics on Instagram. We appreciate you guys stopping by. <laughs> it was a great conversation, yeah. and we wish you guys nothing but the best of luck this year. Yeah. Thanks, guys.